So I separated my heifer calf and I bought a new little calf that was easier to handle because of letdown issues with the cow. This is going to solve all our problems, right? But here's the thing. Our cow is not pleased about being separated from her calf. So she's on lockdown today. She's not very happy about it. What I did was there's a gate right there, right there, that takes her to fields beyond. And in those fields beyond, she shares a fence line with her heifer calf. And she spent a lot of time just sharing a fence line with that heifer calf. Um, even now you can see her walking back to that fence line. But I closed her in. There's not a whole lot of grass in here. There is a bit over there too. So I just filled up her hay feeders. And she gets hay today. And a bit of grass. And she's just not pleased with me. Yesterday, those are cute little bantam roosters. I'll show you. Oh, you guys are so cute. So yesterday my sister milked and she hadn't milked the cow in a couple weeks and the cow was not pleased about this change in milkers and a dairy farmer friend stopped by last night and he was like that's totally what I would expect someone new milking the cow you're gonna have let down problems and I knew so then yesterday Anna's like okay the cow won't let down for me I'm only getting a tiny bit of milk um, so what we ended up having to do in order to get her to let down was we took her to her heifer calf and let the heifer calf drain her so I knew this morning's milking was going to be difficult because she's like, wait, that's an option? I can go into that field and nurse my calf? No cow, it's not a normal option. So I milked her today. I messed up and I forgot to put the kick bar on, which is like this bar we put on that restricts a bit of movement. Like they can still move, but they can't do that big kick. I forgot that and she was ticked at me for not being with her calf. She was ticked at the new calf. I let the new calf nurse a little bit and then kicked him out put the kick bar on washed her up and milked her and at that point she stood still for me but she still just didn't let down very well and honestly she's giving less milk which is kind of annoying and I'm hoping she bounces back from that I'm hoping that being in here with a bunch of hay that she might but right now she's just frustrated so you can see her over here this is what we call the sacrifice pasture because they get locked in here in winter. So these pastures will pretty much never grow, but it's good to have a sacrifice pasture instead of them ruining your whole pasture in winter because when grass starts to grow, they'll just eat it back so quick that it, they can kill the roots. You're eating thistles in here though. Are thistles that delicious that you choose them over hay and grass? I find that when you have just one cow or two cows, their quirks really come out a lot more. When you have a whole herd, their quirks get lost within a herd for better or worse. But when you have just one cow, those quirks really come out. So let's see how locking her in does. I mean, she still has like an acre pasture in here. It's not like she's like on that much lockdown. She's just locked away from her calf farther. Let's see how she does. So in here is where she can come and I just filled this up with a square bale. Here's Jeffy. Did you get a nice belly full this morning, Jeffy? Better go deal with that milk before the cats find out that I have a bucket of milk there. So here's what I got for milk. This is three liters and the bucket's kind of dirty because the cow kicked it, but that's fine because this is for the heifer calf. Um, the first three liters I milked for the heifer calf, the cow kicked. So I lost three liters and here I have about a gallon. I would have got like a solid gallon and a half for us and three liters for the calf. So it's still two gallons Plus, this calf nurses right off of her, and you can account for him taking about two to three liters, at least. So, it's not too shabby, but it's dropping a bit. And I'm hoping as she adjusts to not having her calf, it's been less than a week, 
I'm hoping that she comes back up. What I do know is next time she has a calf, we are pulling that calf right away. We are not playing this game. I'm sure hoping that by pulling her calf right away next time, we will get rid of a lot of these problems. But we just really wanted calf sharing to work because it can be so good. It can make your life so much easier. Not with this cow. So I just looked at the one gallon of milk I got this morning. And Annabelle was most definitely holding back her cream. See that tiny little cream line? No girl, no. I'll show you what normal is. That's normal. Nice big cream line at the top. So, I'm gonna go put my boots on. And let's see what this cow decides to do tonight. So even just walking around the corner, oh now they're quiet now. They are bellowing away. The calf is mooing. Chickens. The cow was bellowing away. Let's see if she'll come in and give me that cream. It would appear everything she held back from me this morning, she's letting down and Boy, are my wrists sore. I got one side done and I'm working on the second side. I'm a good bit into it. We'll see how much milk I get here, but my wrists are sore. So she gave me a bunch of milk, but looking at this one quarter, she's still holding back some in it. I can see it up here. She's still holding it back. Also, I figured out why she was bellowing so much. Her, her calf is out and it's over there. That's why she was bellowing over there. So yesterday when she was holding back in this one, it was like hard she was holding back so much. And so that's why we put her in with her calf because we didn't want to risk mastitis. But then she was a real grump this morning. So we're not going to put her in with her calf. Um, I'm going to bring the bull calf back in, which she's not always a big fan of. She wouldn't let down for it yesterday. Uh, the other option is I just, you know, pressure builds up and she finally lets down but I'll probably just do that because she won't like the bull calf coming back in so luckily this calf is fairly tame uh, so this calf has been drinking from a bucket so it sees my bucket and it's pretty much following me back in. Now it's gonna stop there, of course. Come on, come on, Kathy Calf. Come on, Patches, come have your bottle. Come on, Patches. Come on, Patches. Also, I'm filming holding the good milk, the calf milk, and the wash bucket. Try not to dump any of them. And this cat is following me trying to get milk too. Where did that calf go now? No cat. Oh, there it is. Okay, now we're gonna open this gate, see if we can get it through without spilling the good milk. The sound of opening the gate made the calf run. So it ran away back to its mama. So now we're gonna try this again. Oh, dang it, calf, please don't run away. Come back, make this easy for me. Okay, let's try this again. Come on, calf. Look, a nice bucket of milk. Come on, calf. Come on, calf. If this doesn't work, I'll go put this milk inside and go get a rope and put our halter on. I was hoping not to. She's turning into a bigger sagger than I thought. Got the lead rope. Figured out where the calf got out. Right here by this gate. Now to go get the calf and go in for dinner because it's very much dinner time. I like to milk before my husband gets home, but my big boys are at judo with my sister on Tuesdays and Thursdays now. So I can't really milk very easily with the little girls without big boys' help. So we uh, are trying milking when he gets home, which is kind of frustrating and pushes dinner back, but it is what it is. So I threw a pallet up there. And of course, I got this done just in time for my sister to get here with a thousand pounds of feed. 
So I normally like to deal with the milk right away, strain it, get it in the fridge. But I had the bucket sitting on the freezer inside. I gotta go get the tractor and unload feed. She was so kind to pick up pig feed for me. So now I need to go unload it. And then we can have dinner. Okay, so now it's the next morning. Got a nice big bucket of creamy milk, and it appears that she is let down. It feels nice and soft in here. So she did give me that quarter, and I was I ended up just leaving. I didn't put any of the calves on her or anything. I left it, and she gave it to me today. So that's good. So now I'm gonna go deal with the milk and um. Let's go see last night's milk and see what the cream line is like on that. See if she really gave us any cream yesterday. And it really reconfirms for me that no matter what, I'm not putting her big calf on her again because it takes multiple milkings to straighten things back out again afterwards and that's really frustrating. Okay, so it was a little improved but still not what it should be. But I'm thinking today should be what it should be. And this concludes our three milking documentary on why I am never calf sharing again.